I'm angry that it's a year later and we don't know any more about why than we did 12 months ago. It's incredibly frustrating. I think 48 hours after Tom was murdered, we, we heard that the individual who, um, who came to our home and committed that murder um, was caught and, um, and was dead. And now it's a year later and that's still all the conclusive information that we have. A year ago today, the commissioner of Colorado State Department of Corrections was shot to death at his own front door at home. Authorities believe that killing was carried out by a former Colorado prisoner named Evan Ebel. He was two days later killed in a shootout with law enforcement in Texas. But a year later, the Denver Post is now reporting that a hit list found in the case includes more than 20 public officials, at least some of whom had no connection to that killer at all. A year on from th these murders, what is going on with this investigation? And is the anger, the palpable anger of Tom Clements' widow uh, as justified as it seems? Joining us now is Kirk Mitchell, reporter for the Denver Post. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, thank you very much for helping us understand this case. Thanks for having me, Rachel. Uh, from, from your reporting, uh, we're, we learned, we've learned everything from the press in this case. We've learned almost nothing from public officials who've said basically nothing about the case since it initially, uh, initially broke open. But from your reporting, does it appear to you that they uh, think that uh, investigators think that Evan Ebel didn't act alone here? There's strong indications that that's the way they're going, and that's what they believe. In fact, they have uh, filed arrest warrant affidavits, search warrant affidavits, in which uh, they have indicated a theory of, of what happened. Ben Davis is the founder of the 211 crew, the white supremacist gang. And he and Evan Ebel were at the same prison in Sterling, Colorado, the Sterling Correctional Facility. While they were there, a threat was made to Evan Ebel that somebody, for, for whatever reason, wa wanted to get him. And uh, uh, th so there were violent threats against him. Ben Davis stepped in for him and uh, protected him. After he did so, though, he made it clear to Evan Ebel that he would have something, he would need to do something for him. There was, in prison, it's always this for that. Nothing is free. And uh, when, he, when Ben Davis, the, the leader of the 211 crew, steps in for you, he's going to expect you to, to stand up for him as well. Is there any reason to believe that the 211 crew as an entity, or Mr. Davis, who's the sort of head of that prison gang, would have, for his own reasons or for the gang's own reasons, drawn up the kind of hit list that you've described in the Denver Post with more than uh, 20 officials on it, uh, some of whom it seems aren't connected at least specifically to Evan Ebel? This prison gang has... Uh through various means, trans transferred hit lists for as long as uh, Ben Davis has been operating. And he's actually serving more than a life sentence for conspiracies in the past in which he uh, targeted other inmates, staff members, and uh, it, it follows the same pattern. Beside names of, they'll send uh, code, and beside the names of intended hits, they'll put 187, which is police code for a murder. Mm. And the 211 crew itself, um, it's the name, 211 is the police code for a robbery. And it's, it's this uh, prison gang's forte to rob not a bank, but other prisoners in, in prison. Very violent gang. They, they have a long history of assaulting other people and very frequently with the mission of a, uh, a racist group. Kirk, can I ask you if the investigation, the explicit investigation being conducted by a number of different law enforcement agencies on this is expected to make further public statements about what's going on? I mean, I, it was very striking when your paper today aired that interview, including that video interview with Tom Clements's widow, saying how frustrated she is to have learned basically everything she's learned about this case from the press and not from investigators at all. Do you expect that they will become a little more explanatory with the public and the victims' families about the status of their investigation? Not until the investigation is complete. They, uh, t today, it's not unusual that uh, police will not release details of their investigation, their findings. They, 
strongly believe that that would uh, impede the investigation and it may uh, uh, tip people off that they should be hiding or uh, avoiding authorities and, and what they're looking at. So it's, it's not unusual. And I've been assured by the El Paso County Sheriff's Office that when they reach a point in time when, when they know one way or the other, they're going to let us know. It's, it could be through an indictment of other players in the conspiracy, or it could be an announcement that uh, we believe that Evan mm -hmm. Ebel was the lone shooter. Kirk Mitchell, crime reporter uh, for the Denver Post, uh, who's reporting on this story has just been riveting. Uh, Kirk, thank you for helping us understand it. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. We'll be right back.